What is up, everybody? Unrest it. Back with the questions you requested. This is JFAC, Japan's Frequently Asked Questions. Today we are talking about a topic that was recently on the show, The Young Turks. I myself am going to cover it as well because it is in the news lately as we approach the 2020 Olympics. How does Japan keep their crime rate so low? And according to the video by the Young Turks, um, it's because there's a lot of corruption. Um, they interview a guy who was uh, falsely accused because he was interrogated for hours on end, days on end, and um, he wasn't even literate. Like, he couldn't even read what he was being made to sign and be accused of. And um, yeah, the police are corrupt. Big surprise there, right? Um, I would say maybe... I don't want to compare it to other countries because I'm going to just get myself in a world of trouble if I start saying, like, America's more corrupt, Japan's less corrupt, Japan's more corrupt. Okay, they're corrupt in a different way. Um, yeah, we've been seeing a lot of stuff in America recently with shootings as far as the police um, unlawfully pretty much shooting innocent victims. Um, that doesn't really tend to happen in Japan ever. You don't really deal with a lot of incidents where they you know, shot first, ask questions later. That's that's not something that happens. Yes, police here do have guns. Um, and actually, even recently, there was a story in the news where a, I believe a mugger was stopped by the police mid-mug. I don't know how you say that as a verb. <laughs> and um, he actually got a hold of the policeman's gun and shot him with it. So, and that's, I mean, that's like super rare. You never hear that happening. And they even have their guns like on a wire that connects into their holster. So, it's actually pretty hard to do. I'm kind of surprised to even have heard that. Um, yeah, for the most part, shootings don't happen. Um, but where the corruption lies is number one, false reporting of crimes. Just this past year in 2015, it was found that Osaka City Police alone for the past 10 years have hidden the files of over 40,000 crimes that were committed. They just didn't report them to any kind of statistics at all. They just kind of filed those away. And I'm talking via the UN, via world statistics and stuff like that, via their own government. And the reason they're doing that is just to try and make their place look safer. Um, in general, Osaka is known as the place with the highest crime rate in all of Japan. And I guess that's probably part of the reason behind why they did what they did. I'm not by any means justifying that it is corrupt as hell. Um, but yes, that's just another example of corruption. And so, and with this guy's case too, it's another um, corrupt thing that the police do here. Um, they interrogated this guy for hours and hours, days and days. And what they can actually do, and this is 100% truthful um, to the exact amount I'm saying, is they can hold you in an interrogation uh, setting, it means like probably at night you would sleep inside of a jail cell, but during the day they'll take you back into the interrogation room. They can do that for 21 days without letting you have a phone call, without letting you reach a family member in any kind of conditions that they want. Um, cruel and unusual punishment is not beyond the Japanese police. It has been used before. I have a friend whose wife... Um, her dad works in a prison in Japan, and apparently, according to her dad, um, they're never, ever allowed to talk about what they do in prisons to keep prisoners in line. I have heard that when you are in prison in Japan, um, you're given very little food, um, a measly, measly amount of rice and maybe miso soup. You are not allowed to do things like exercise. When you are in your cell, you are supposed to be sitting Indian style with meditation going on and that's it. I think maybe you're allowed a book here or there, um, but for the most part it's pretty regiment and it's pretty hardcore. They constantly are on watch. You don't hear a lot of escape stories in Japan. You don't hear about a lot of people escaping from jail. I have yet to have ever heard one happen. I'm sure it probably has happened at some point long before I got here, but for the most part that doesn't happen. They are on hardcore lockdown. Um, solitary is um, pretty common there. It's, it's much, much more of a punishment rather than being reformed when you go to jail in Japan. Um, anyway, but back to the uh, whole interview, interview, interrogation process. Yeah, you're not getting a job. Um, yeah, it's, from what I've heard, it's, it's brutally cruel. There was a guy, I believe two or three years back, and he was on 2.5 Oyajis with Victor and Hiko Simon, 
and he had actually been stopped because his visa it wasn't his visa was expired it was his gaijin card was expired that's right that's what it was um and i believe he was mid process of getting it updated but this was a time where you didn't now you immediately get it back like as soon as it's processed they give it back to you um during that time i believe they held it for a couple weeks um i remember having to wait at least three weeks to get mine when i first got here but that has totally changed um and he was walking around, and when the police stopped him, he didn't have his Gaijin card. Now, yes, you do have to show your Gaijin card. You can ask why you're being asked to show it, but yes, you do have to show it, unless you are a nationalized citizen of Japan, in which case it's actually illegal for the Japanese police to ask you for that. Um, just, I guess, a little heads up if you ever become a citizen. Good luck with that. Um, he was stopped. He was asked for that. He did not have it, and he was put in jail. Um, and he was interrogated for these 21 days to see if they could get any kind of crime on him. Luckily for this guy, he had never done anything bad in his life, pretty much, as far as crime was concerned. And uh, he was let go, but he said it was harsh. It was it was really a horrible one. Now, there are some stories that are not true. Okay, There was one reporter a while back um, who's later been found to be totally false about all his reporting. He's a total lame duck when it comes to anything and everything he's ever reported about, but before that he was actually considered to be a legit reporter, and he talked about um, how he was put in a sort of gulag prison after uh, he was stopped at uh, Narita International Airport um, for overstaying his visa by two or three days, I believe it was. He said it was just a basic mistake, he had accidentally done it, but that the Japanese took the harshest punishment they possibly could and locked him away, put him in a gulag, and uh, he was forced into all these horrible conditions where he couldn't eat and everything. Later it was found out this guy's story was totally false. So if you ever start to research this and you come across that one because it pops up a lot, I believe the guy's name was uh, Jonathan Christopher. I believe it was like two first names, sounded like two first names. I could be wrong though on that. I can't remember his name offhand, but you'll see it said something like Narita Airport connected to Gulag Prison or Narita Airport and it's underground Gulag Prison. It's it's totally fake. It's, it's false. So I want to clear that one up right away. But the thing about what the Young Turks has interviewed this guy for here, 100% legit. Um, just two or three years ago, there was actually a guy from, I can't remember if it was Thailand or Indonesia. Uh, he had been released after being in jail for, I believe, something like 13 years. And it was because they had gotten a false confession out of him. The reason that he had signed it was actually because he was cheating on his wife at the time. He was with some stripper or cabaret girl or snack girl or something at the time. And so he didn't want to say exactly where he was. But instead of going to the effort of actually investigating it and finding out who, what, when, and where, uh, they just let him sign a accusation that he was the one who was there at that time, at that place when this crime happened. And it was a murder. It was a big case. And he went to jail for 13 years before finally, I believe it was a relative in his home country, spent enough money to hire a lawyer in Japan who actually took the time to investigate and find out that, yes, he was in fact innocent. He was cheating on his wife at the time, which of course I'm not condoning, but he didn't kill anyone, which is, you know, obviously something very bad. So, yes, corruption within the police does happen. It happens a lot. Um, I've heard other really bad stuff, and ladies, this is kind of a warning for you. Um, I have had many female friends, especially blonde friends, and I'm not just, like, keying them up so that I can, you know, take a stab at blonde girls. This just happens to blonde girls more. I've noticed this. This just happens to blonde girls more, okay? I'm sorry. I don't know exactly why I'm having a feeling that it's some sort of fetish thing within Japan. I don't want to accuse Japanese people of having a fetish for blonde girls, but I've had more blonde girls report this to me, that they've been sexually assaulted within Japan. And it's mostly just stuff like, you know, being someone copping a feel, someone trying to get aggressively too close, looking for a kiss or something like that. Most of the time it is a drunk person. Doesn't excuse it. It's not cool. I'm not cool with any of that stuff. I'm just saying examples. Please don't jump down my throat. Um, and when they have reported it to the police in Japan, they don't take it seriously. Um, the, I've heard horrible stuff as far as like the police accusing the victim being like, well, did you make it that they wanted to, you know, kiss you? Did you allure them in? Did you, you know, act lustful towards them? And they're like, no, what the hell are you talking about? And those are the first questions that come to their mouths instead of saying things like, okay, what can we do? We can get you a counselor. You know, can we start looking for the person who did this? Instead of doing things like that, they immediately accuse the victim. And I've heard it happen quite a few times. 
Um, I remember one friend who was going upstairs to her apartment. Um, and during that time, a guy pushed her down when she was going up the stairwell. And after he made her lose her footing, because it's very easy to do in a stairwell, um, that's where he took a chance to like aggressively kiss her. He didn't, he didn't do anything more than kiss her, but still, I mean, who, you know, I don't want to be kissed by anybody. Um, well, unless they're a really cute girl, but I'm a guy that's different. Um, I don't want to be aggressively kissed by a man, <laughs> knocked down and kissed by a man. Nothing wrong with men kissing men, but guys hold off, please. Um, so this is what happened to her. And, um, she reported it to the police and I remember she talked to me about it afterwards about how horrible the experience was. Um, that that's the things I just mentioned where they're like, well, I mean, did you want the kiss? I mean, did you, you know, want him to be your boyfriend? She's like, what the, I don't know this guy. I just, he, some random dude in my apartment complex who pushed me down the stairs. They, they, they didn't take it serious. They didn't file anything. They were useless. Um, I've had, um, my own self, the crime stuff that I've dealt with, I had an employer who um, wouldn't pay me my last paycheck. And I, of course, told him I was getting a lawyer. At that point, he sent employees to my house to try and threaten me. Um, and so I let the police know right away. They, you know, they were like, you better not, you know, like they, they were like sending threatening letters and pretending it was a lawyer when it was like a fake letter. There was no lawyer's signature on it. They were sending employees to my house to try and talk to me to like threaten me. And so I let the police know. I reported it all to the police. They did zero. They're like, yeah, you know, we can't really prove it unless there's a camera. Um, you know, we can't really go question them because they're going to say the opposite thing. They did nothing about it. And plus they probably just figured I was going to leave and go back to America anytime soon anyway. So why look into it? Um, so that was, that's been my experiences. My also, my experiences with the police haven't been so great as far as them just randomly stopping me because I have tattoos or randomly stopping me because I remember a few times where a gaijin had done something in the area. So they were just stopping every gaijin and asking them, you know, for their ID and stuff so that, you know, just had to put a lockdown on those gaijin because one of them did something wrong. So they're all bad, right? Um, yeah, but I guess, you know, in their defense, um, one time when I was in my apartment, um, they asked if they could search it because it was, it was actually plain clothes officers were at my door when I was going home and they were like, Hey, can we search your apartment? There's, uh, uh, this Korean girl who's just stolen somebody's purse in your apartment complex. And at first I thought total bullshit. They're just looking around my apartment to see if I'm some kind of drug or something. Cause they think every gaijin is. And sure enough, while they were doing that, they heard somebody running down the stairs. They dashed out of my apartment. They got this girl and she had stolen a purse and she was a Korean girl and they got her. No, no, nothing against Korean people. I don't think all of them are stealing purses. Um, you just always got to throw these disclaimers out there because when people will jump down your throat for just about anything on YouTube. Anyway, guys, my own personal experiences with the police. Are they corrupt in Japan? Yeah, for the most part. I'm not saying every single last police officer is. Once in a while, you know, you find a helpful one. They'll help you find your directions, find your way. Um, but actually, I will even say when I first got to Japan, um, I asked quite a few police for directions because that's what I was used to in America. You ask police for directions and they weren't having it. They're just like, I don't even speak English. Why are you asking me? Um, there's actually one place in Amemura where they got it so much that they hired a secondary guy who's just like a kind of a cheap security guard. And that's only his job is answering map questions when people come up and are like, where's this? Because they just didn't want to try and speak English and they didn't want to try and help. Um, you know, and, and it's Amemura, and you'd, you'd be like, why do they need to learn English? It's it's Amemura, American village. It's the place a lot of gaijin are going to go. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like saying the most international section of Osaka where the most gaijin go, why, why do they need to speak English? Because gaijin, that's why. Um, you know, I, I would understand if it's like the countryside that, yeah, there's no point. They don't need to learn English out there in like, you know, Inaka, you know, somewhere in the middle of Fukuoka countryside. They don't need to be speaking English. But I, I would think in a place called the American Village, may, maybe a look, you know, Scotia, Scotia. Um, so that that's just my own personal experiences. I will be <laughs> honest. I'm sure I'm I'm coming across as um, a little more aggressive with my opinion as far as this. I'm sure some people would argue it the other way please realize what I'm telling you here is just my own personal experience and information I have had told firsthand from friends who've experienced this stuff and my own. My experience may differ from yours. You may have a great one. There may be other J vloggers who had a great experience and think Japanese cops are great. That's awesome. That's fine. They are not wrong. I am not wrong. I am not right. 
They are not wrong. They are not right. Do you understand what I mean? I hope you do. Until next time, this was Jay Fack, and I am unrested with the questions you requested. Have a good one, guys.